Hello, it is Misfit Ryan once more, back with a commentary after so long, and I know you all love my commentaries. Now, I'm going to be doing a commentary on Midlife Jim, who just loves to generalize commentators. So what say I verbally rip him a new one? Short, clean, and straight to the point. I like that. Commentaries. Essentially, it's you inviting yourself into a conversation no one asked you to join. If I were worried about pissing people off by airing conversations I wasn't even supposed to join, I wouldn't be here right now. And on a side note, is it just me, or does this guy sound like one of those text-to-speech voices? New media is equivalent of syphilis. In the words of the immortal Tim Allen. <clears throat> uh? Something which is easily spread and, in hindsight, embarrassing to admit having caught. The symptoms are unique, generally inflicting the user with a massively swollen ego, strained vocal cords, Tourette's-like speech patterns, and the inability to shut the fuck up. Huh? Much like syphilis, it's a communicable disease, every day spreading deeper and deeper within various communities until none are left pure from its touch. You do realize we're on the internet, right? There is just no quality control whatsoever, so you're pretty much just arguing a moot point. Persistent, virulent, never ceasing in its mission to make users create more and more useless content. It would appear to be unstoppable. And unless YouTube creates some form of digital prophylactic, we'll all just have to learn to be a little more careful. We'll have to become more cautious in who we come into contact with, since one of the favorite delivery methods for this terrible pox is its ability to jump host merely through watching an infected user's videos. People will have to be more diligent in not promoting its growth and spread throughout the various content sites that exist. But just what is this accursed blight? How does it operate? Where does it come from? Well, let's take a moment to examine its many guises and see if we can discover some of the answers to those questions. Meanwhile, let us take the chance to see me verbally rip this guy a new asshole. Just what is a commentary anyway? Well, as I'd stated earlier, it's when a person believes that their own opinion is something so important they need to interject it into any discussion any discussion that doesn't involve them well no one wants to be left out it's strange but it would appear the best way to coax a commentary out of another user is to do everything but specifically talk about them whether you're talking about their friends the weather or just dish soap huh? as long as you don't mention them it's a near guarantee they'll feel obligated to mention you it's like encyclopedia dramatica if it wins, or if it fails, it's gonna be there. Like flies on shit, commentators are instinctively drawn to anything and everything. And while that analogy might not make sense to you right now, a commentator will eventually stumble onto this video, and they'll decide to make a commentary about that one line in particular. What line? You see, it's just that easy. They can't help themselves. It's a compulsion, like drinking or using cocaine or masturbating. Except commentaries aren't harmful and pointless if they're taken in the right context. They're spurred on by something stronger than them. Anytime they come across a video which is getting attention, something inside their little heads clicks, and they're driven to try and latch onto it. They are utterly powerless before it. Instead of creating something on their own which is original or unique or has vision, they find it easier instead to merely ride the coattails of someone else's work. You mean like how your mom lets me ride her every night? Like parasites, once they attach themselves, it's nearly impossible to shake them off. Actually, it's surprisingly easy. You can either A, shift the blame to someone else, B, get off the internet, or C, just plain shut up. From that point onward, they'll respond to any and every video another user makes. Nitpicking details which don't need to be nitpicked, and calling out things the user says as if they need to be called out in the first place. Again, Tubers93. And the whole time they're doing this, they'll be utterly convinced that what they're doing is both entertaining and informative. In actuality, however, it's not. It's not entertaining. It's not informative. Instead, what it is, is a desperate attempt on their part to try and gain attention for themselves. I like to believe any and all commentaries and commentators can be entertaining and informative if, you know, the videos are taken in the proper context and not blown totally out of proportion by people like you. Now, much like syphilis, which you seem to have an unnatural attraction to, or any other communicable disease, there are different subtypes. 
similar to cancer and that they can be classed together even though they may vary in form. So let's take a moment to evaluate these different kinds of commentaries to see what each is like and what each has to offer. And again, let's take a moment to watch me verbally rip this guy a new one. Ah, the cutaway. Favored amongst the 13-year-old furry demographic on YouTube, it seems to have grown greatly in popularity within the past few years. It's pretty straightforward, so yeah, there's a reason it should have. Generally comprised of the use of reaction images being interspersed throughout the video being commented on, it also boasts the ability to lengthen most 5-minute videos into 50-minute ones. This is mainly due to the inability of the commenter to audio duck. The result? A cutaway which happens every time the person doing the commentary wants to say something, whether that be every minute, every few seconds, or even every other word. A common characteristic of this type of commentary is the overuse of a small sample of reaction images, which is understandable. After all, Google Image Search can only supply so many Pikachus until you've reached the bottom of the barrel. In which case, you would go to DeviantArt. One other interesting note is the overabundance in use of anime characters. This would seem to hint at the fact that the vast majority who choose this style are, in fact, weeaboos. Huh? This second most popular style of commentary utilizes a basic feature in most video and audio editing programs called audio ducking. This refers to the lessening of the original video's audio track to allow the commentator to be heard over it in real time. Oh, you mean dubbing? Unlike the cutaway style of commentary, this one adds nothing in other than a new audio track, thus keeping the original video's length intact. This style of commentary can be traced back to a patient zero of sorts, directly to Retsupre. After SA Goons decided to begin doing their own brand of commentary on LPers within the YouTube community, it quickly spawned a whole host of imitators. Sadly, these imitations lack the one thing that made Retsupre successful, namely, humor. Huh? Without the ability to actually be funny, these videos are just as god-awful as any other type of commentary to be found. This style of commentary is marked by a few unique features. It's most often used by the unsavviest of internet denizens. You can tell when a commentary falls into this category by the mere fact that what's being commented on is neither present in video or audio form. Then wouldn't you be talking about a rant? Whether the commenter was spurred on by such rage that they forgot to include what the hell they were commenting on, or whether they just don't understand how to download a video and put it into an editing program, still remains a bit of a mystery. The entertainment brought on by these types of commentaries is akin to watching a monkey eat its own shit. <laughs> it's, it's not so much what you said, dude. It's the fact that you said it with such a straight face. <laughs> Oh my god, it hurts to laugh. <laughs> oh, moving on. You laugh out of pity and disgust, and nothing more. The final type on the list has, over the last year or so, become more prevalent. With so many videos being commented on, the choices to pick from have become more and more limited, and have led to retreads, or commentaries on commentaries on commentaries. The most notable feature of this type of commentary is the inability to tell who's commenting on what. Ever heard of something called a watermark? Since, by this point, so many loud retards are yelling at one another that- For example- You might as well close your eyes and sit and spin. Ha! Sadly, current projections show that this will soon be the only kind of commentary around within the next three years culminating in what some have called Google's final solution, in which YouTube will only have one video available, which is comprised of every video on the site. Again. Ha! The sound emitted by this final video will have a brown note-like effect on users and cause their heads to implode, thus bringing an end to the commentators once and for all. So now that we know what a commentary is and the different types that exist, we're left wondering, what now? What do we do? I would say go home, go on to YouTube, and quit treating it like a problem. Hey, that's just what I'd do. How do we live out these next three years until Google's final plan is realized? Well, you could turn off the internet, but that's silly. After all, most people's imaginations just can't compete with hardcore porn. So, that option's off the table. I suppose we could try and avoid video content sites, but if we do that, where are we going to get our fix of cats playing the piano or people getting kicked in the balls? MTV? 
No, it would seem that the best solution is simply to not be a part of the problem. We need to make a concentrated effort to stem the tide. And how do we do that? Simple. Stop making commentaries. See? I told you it was simple, didn't I? Yeah, but see, like a lot of things, it's so head-slappingly simple that it's stupid! This is Misfit Ryan signing out, and remember, I'm full of awesomeness, and you are not.